This is Grizzly 399, the world's most famous bear, and I had the privilege of being among the very first people to see and photograph her when she broke records and shocked biologists around the world by emerging with a new cub and becoming the oldest bear ever known to reproduce. It was the highlight of my wildlife photography career to capture this historic moment on camera, and I'm so excited to show you all what I captured. But before that, let's rewind to three days earlier and see how this journey all began. It was a cool spring day in Gardner, Montana as I left my home and headed into Yellowstone National Park. I was looking for newborn bison calves to photograph, and after a quick stop to film a coyote catching and eating rodents, I found a herd of bison along a beautiful, scenic stretch of river in the western half of Yellowstone. I got out of my truck, grabbed my camera gear, and walked down towards the riverside. Where? On my way down. Jeremy? Evan? What are you doing here? I ran into Jeremy Knipe. Jeremy is a wildlife photographer and YouTuber based in Central California, and he traveled over a thousand miles to get to Yellowstone so we could shoot together. After filming a few clips of the bison, Jeremy and I made a game plan for tomorrow before night fell. Yellowstone's Lamar Valley was calling, and we had an early morning ahead of us to get there. A long drive in the pre-dawn light landed us in the valley before sunrise, where we found a tranquil scene of two bull bison in front of sweeping mountain peaks. As beautiful as the moment was, I didn't find any photo opportunities I loved here, so I shot some video and then we moved on. Just a few miles away, we found a large herd of bison making their way through the lush green grasses that coat the valley in spring. We found a parking spot and then got our camera gear out and set up along the side of a large ephemeral pond that separated us from the bison. The herd was full of tiny bison calves, or as we call them here in Yellowstone, red dogs, frolicking and nursing from their mothers. These guys are mere days old and are the smallest and cutest they'll ever be, so I put my focus on capturing photos of them. As Jeremy and I photographed the bison, a different species came into view. A female pronghorn made her way through the middle of the herd. As she did so, I was able to capture a few photos featuring both her and the bison. Cool, well, I feel like you got some pretty cool stuff there. How about you? That's pretty, pretty dope, yeah. yeah that was awesome. Ready to move on down deeper into the valley and see what else we can find? Yeah, let's All do right. it. Sounds good. Jeremy and I got up and went back to our vehicles after a very successful shoot. While the bison had been awesome, we hadn't seen any of Yellowstone's iconic predators yet. So we made our way up the road to a spot where I knew a wolf pack was denning. The den is about two miles away and is nearly impossible to see without optics. So it's a good thing Decuvir, the sponsor of today's video, sent Jeremy and I a telescope to use for the length of our time in Yellowstone. Using Decuvir's telescope, we were not only able to see wolves at the den, but when we swung it around to the opposite hillside, we were able to watch a mother grizzly with two subadult cubs foraging. When you buy this scope, Decuvir even includes an attachment that allows you to put your phone on the scope. That way, you can capture anything from bears, to bison, to wolves, even from miles and miles away. If you're interested in purchasing the MC80 telescope, check out the link I included in the description. And huge thanks to Decuvir for providing us with this opportunity. Jeremy and I wouldn't have been able to fund these collaboration videos without them. While seeing grizzlies at a distance is an amazing experience, we really wanted to see one that was close enough to photograph. So after packing up the scope, we headed deeper into Lamar Valley, where we found both a large crowd and a lone grizzly digging in an open meadow. Due to the crowd, the bear stayed pretty far out, and while it was closer than the ones we had seen earlier, it still wasn't close enough for photos. By now, we had been in the park for hours, and we still had days of shooting ahead of us. So, we decided to call it a day and went our separate ways for the night. After a bit of rest, we were back in the park early the next morning with plans of going to the park's interior to look for wildlife. We made it to Hayden Valley just before dawn. 
Right off the bat, we saw some waterfowl in a flooded creek bottom, so we got out and began shooting. I was able to create some interesting, moody shots with the waterfowl silhouetted against the reflection of the white snow that still clung to the ground at this high elevation. We decided to move on quickly, not wanting to miss out on anything that might present itself in the golden early morning light. As we drove alongside the Yellowstone River, I pointed out a spot where harlequin ducks can often be found, so Jeremy, being primarily a bird photographer, stopped to see if he could find them. I decided to continue further north, where I found a familiar grizzly bear that I hadn't seen in quite a long time. This is Grizzly 864 with her two yearling cubs. Last year, I was, as far as I'm aware at least, the first person to see her and her cubs out in the public eye. I didn't get to watch her for too long today before they disappeared, but it was still great to get to see her again. In the meantime, Jeremy had found and photographed the Harlequin ducks, and he had captured some epic photos of them in the rushing waters of the river. I won't spoil everything he got here, you'll just have to go check out his video to see that. Eventually, Jeremy and I met back up. It was getting hot and late in the day, which meant the wildlife activity was dying down, so we decided to focus our efforts on an area of the park that, regardless of why you came to Yellowstone, you have to see on your first trip here. The Geothermals. As we made our way towards the geothermals, we came across a herd of bison just north of the first geyser basin. We didn't spend much time here, but I was still able to make some cool photos out of the encounter. Finally, we made it to my favorite geothermal feature, Grand Prismatic Spring. As I showed Jeremy around the basin, he was stunned by the beautiful, deep pools that surrounded us. It wasn't the wildlife that we had initially teamed up to photograph, but it was still well worth the stop. This concluded our second day together and our last full day in Yellowstone. The next morning, we were headed south to Grand Teton National Park, where I had no idea a historic encounter with Grizzly 399 was waiting. On our way out of the park the following morning, we stopped at a shallow, marshy pond to photograph waterfowl. Jeremy had shot here the evening before, and we felt there was some real potential for photos. Unfortunately, the activity wasn't quite as good as it had been the day before, and all I got were some mallards. However, with that said, I do really like this reflection shot. As the sun rose, we returned to our vehicles and continued south. We made a brief stop at Old Faithful, since Jeremy had never seen it before, and then finally, into the Tetons. The past few days had been awesome, but we had had very little success with getting good photos of large predators. I knew the Tetons were great for bear photography, and the time of year was just right for mothers emerging with new cubs. It was just a matter of finding them. So while Jeremy continued deeper into the park to explore with the very limited time he had here, I stayed back to look for bears, planning on texting him the moment they emerged. For hours on end, I roamed an area where bears are typically seen. I was happy to take any bear sighting, but deep down, I was hoping for a specific bear. A special bear. I was in the territory of famous Grizzly 399, a bear that has made headlines around the world for years. Nobody had seen her yet this year, and at 27 years old, she had lived well past the average lifespan of a grizzly bear. It was anyone's guess whether she was even still alive or not. As I came around a corner, my heart skipped a beat. I saw a traffic jam. And in this area, traffic jams equal bear sightings. I quickly grabbed my camera, jumped out of the truck, and made my way over to the crowd. I was informed that just moments before I had pulled up, someone had seen a bear with a cub in the distance. The sighting was incredibly brief. But given its location, we all had one assumption on who it was. 399. If it was her, she would be breaking a record in the world of bear biology. She would be the oldest bear to ever emerge from hibernation with a cub. The moment she came out would be historic. If it was her, it was not something I could miss. So, I texted Jeremy what information I knew and staked out along the roadside. Jeremy ended up missing this encounter, but he was able to find another bear, a bear named Bonita, who you've seen in some of my videos before, so check out his video to see what he captured of her. 
Meanwhile, word of the potential 399 sighting traveled fast. It seemed as though nearly every professional photographer in Jackson Hole had converged on the scene. The crowd sat and waited patiently for five hours, and the day was getting late. I was beginning to doubt if we'd see the bear again or not, when suddenly, people started scrambling. They were rushing down the road towards the next open meadow with a good line of sight. Something was happening. I shot down the road as quickly as possible and jumped out of the truck. In the meadow, the distinctive shoulder hump of a healthy adult grizzly bear stood out, a cub following behind it. The scene was backlit, so it was impossible to tell who the bear was, but she was moving fast. I ran up the road to get ahead of them and get a better lighting angle. The bears made their way towards me, and after foraging in some shade for a moment, stepped out into the light. As they did so, I felt a feeling I've never felt at a wildlife jam before. A feeling of relief, happiness, and triumph washed over the crowd. As the bears stepped out into the sunlight, the familiar face of Grizzly 399 was revealed, and it wasn't about photos anymore. Everyone was just happy to be there for this moment, to see this bear alive and well, to see her set another record, and to see her shock the world yet again in her 27th year of life. As 399 moved closer to the crowd, I expected the rangers would make us move back, but they didn't. They were just as excited and impressed to see her alive as we were. So, for as long as 399 was comfortable, they let us stay close to her and allowed us to document the moment for nearly two hours. I was firing away both photos and video, literally shaking with excitement. I got some photos I liked, but given the significance of this encounter, I wanted to get something more than just a photo I liked. I wanted to get a photo I loved. I wanted to get a photo that would become my new favorite photo I've ever taken. To me, only a photo like that would do justice to the highlight wildlife encounter of my photography career so far. So as the sun dropped lower in the sky, I switched positions. 399 had slowly been working her way closer and closer to the road, and when she finally decided to cross, I felt like my new position would be the best one for photos. Eventually, she got right up to the roadside. Just before crossing, 399 caught wind of something in the woods to her left. She suddenly popped up on her hind legs, ready to defend her cub. The tiny cub, spooked by her sudden change in behavior, stood and pawed at her side, begging for her comfort and attention. With my heart pounding, I fired away at the powerful moment that had just occurred, and after hours of patience nearly all day long, I captured my favorite photo I've ever taken. Finally, as the sun dipped behind the Tetons, 399 and her cub came out into the road and crossed. They disappeared into the forest on the other side, and with that, the incredible encounter came to an end. I walked back to my truck with a huge smile on my face. 399 was alive, and she had done it again. She had a new cub. And to top it all off, I had captured this historic moment with my favorite photo I'd ever taken. Man, what a day. Before I end this video, many of you on other social media platforms have asked to buy prints of this photo, so I just wanted to let you know I do have it up for sale as a print on my website, which you can find at the link in the description below. Thank you guys for your endless support and for watching. I will see you all in the next video.